we see, we see some similar repetitious shapes from the tip of the sponge that I used. So what I'm going to do, I think, is with this applicator, I'm going to loosen those edges a little bit. I do have, have to add a little bit of pastel to it, a little bit of the pan. Let's see how it changes the shapes. Just loosening Go up to a yellow here and just loosen that up. The, probably about the last thing I'll do in the sky is I'm going to add some dark, darker clouds back in to cover over some of what's going on here. So let's establish all these light shapes now. Sunlight on that. There we go. See, that's working pretty well. Come up here. Just a little smidge more yellow up here. So, you know, when you find something, <laughs> use it. About the last thing I think I'll do in the sky itself is add these little bits of um, darker clouds, and I'm going to use this shape to do it. I suspect that this turquoise, which is predominant, will probably be the color that I want. I may mix a little purple color into it. There we go. That's working. So I'll put down the turquoise and then add the purple where it needs it. Just, this is just cloud that's just so... Just almost not there. This shape. I'm back to my big wedge shaped pad that I love. Ooh, all that here. Pulling up a little bit of orange and some bright yellow. I'll probably mute this back again because I don't want it to compete with the sky. Now, I'm introducing this little fun wedge pad because I find that I can do these trees wonderfully well. What I think I'll do is create some shapes um, by mixing black with some of the colors because I really like having the dark in there. But before I do that, I really need to establish this distant mountain range. I like the color, but it's a little bright. So I'm going to mute the color just slightly and get these shapes. And I think this pad will, see how I bend it? And it gives these nice shapes to the distant mountain. Definitely want the range of the mountains to be 
solid and dark so that I know where they are. Because I'm going to pull that sky down a little further. So now I'm going to grab some black and some very dark green. And I'm just going to put some shapes in here. I'm not going to get all uptight about making it perfect. some shapes in here. Okay, let's put in some smaller shapes back in here. Again, I'm using a little mixture of black and green to just kind of get this suggestion of something going on there. And, um, and then let's create here sort of a mid-ground hill. with some dotty little growth on it. Again, I, I, I'm not really concerned about trying to create anything that looks particularly like anything, just texturing it, just texturing the whole thing. One of the other things that I'm seeing is I want to add just a touch of this paler sky color back in in here. One of the things I just love too is that I don't have to use fixative. There's just not much still coming off and they stay these paintings really hold the pastel it's very sheer it's very sheer so I find I don't need to use fixative if fixative is part of your uh, style of painting however uh, there's no reason why you can't use it need to resolve just a little bit down in here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this wedge pad again, and I'm going to grab some rust. I haven't used a lot of rust, but it's a close-up color and I think it'll work. So I'm kind of just going to establish this as the foreground. Touches of grassy strokes in here. the very last little thing that I want to do is to just reestablish some of this brilliant orange and create some shapes in here that are very small that I think will be effective and important. <laughs> 